Hey folks, Dave here, and I like The Last Ranger somewhere over here. Great guy, great YouTube channel, recently made a video about my top three favorite fidget knives, flipper knives, I forgot how specifically he worded it. And it was basically a conversation in open tag, first one of these I've done, an open tag about communicating what are your favorite fidget knives. It's a concept that knife people talk about a lot, at least YouTube knife people do. I don't know if real people do, but I don't know any real people. It's essentially the versatility of your knife as a toy, or as an instrument of entertainment rather than just one of utility. And it sounds laughable to someone who has never heard of this before, but it actually can be a very important factor in carrying what you carry because obviously you're only the most important knife in the world the most valuable knife in the world is the one in your pocket and the only one that you're gonna put in your pocket is the one that you want there so these are the knives that I enjoy playing with and that helps them end up in my pocket a little bit more often first some honorable mentions I'm going to lead off with a couple that really could have made the big leagues, but have a couple of drawbacks that I've discussed in the past. The ZT5620, that's not what this is. The ZT562 remains one of the absolute best flippers that I have ever used. The detent is incredible. The problem is that there's a lot of uh, the flipper hook I don't like, and also it's got a little bit of a, a double clutch action. And I don't like that, so it doesn't really make the list. Great action, drop shut, but a couple issues. SOG CLXR, similarly, whole bunch of jimping there on the flipper tab. It's big, it's beefy, running on bearings, the action is incredible. Just part of the size makes it a little bit less fiddly than some of the others I'm going to end up talking about. But not a terrible action, fantastic action. My actual two honorable mentions starts with this, the Kershaw Fraction, which for a budget knife, because this is very, very cheap, is one of my very favorite flipper actions, and it closes right there. Now, the reason that it makes this list of honorable mentions is because this is the knife that I opened my lunch with. This knife is at all times of its life, currently at least, clipped, well closed anyway, but clipped to the outside of my work bag so that when it's time for me to open a bag of chips or whatever, I grab this, I cut it open, I close it, and I put it back. This knife is in that role specifically because it's quick to open, quick to use, and quick to put away. Whenever I'm pulling this out, it's because I'm about to eat, and that's real nice. Gives it a little, little booster points. My last honorable mention is a weird one. It's the uh, Ker it's the Kershaw, whatever. It's the Spyderco Delica. The reason that it is on this list is because on, again, YouTube people talk a lot about not being able to Spidey flick a lockback or lockbacks not really being fidget friendly. And whenever I hear that, well, it probably means you don't like your Delica enough. Because if you like it, and you carry it, and you use it, this thing can be an absolute joy to play with. When it gets worked in, you can say, shake it shut, you can spidey flick it, do all kinds of things. Spider Codelica, it's not the most fidgety thing in the world, but compared to a lot of what I see people talking about, this thing's incredible, and also it's really, really fun to play with. Now I'm about to dive into my actual top three, the heap of the pile, top of the heap, whatever, the heap of the pile. And I've actually determined my list in a slightly different way than what I believe uh, The Last Ranger or Stuff We Do. Both of those channels will be linked below. Based on their discussions of their choices, what it sounded like is that they made their decisions based on what they carry. I actually did not. My knife box sits, this is my work desk, by the way, that's a list of other channels that I recommend, those two will also be on that list, you can find it on my channel, but my knife box sits 
there-ish. Usually it's, usually it's on the desk, currently it's on the floor, and whenever I'm doing something else, I always have something pulled out and I'm playing with it. Whenever I'm on the phone with people, it can be a little frustrating for them. Now, these knives that I'm playing with while doing other things aren't necessarily the knife I'm carrying in my pocket that day. It's just the one that's the most fun in the moment. To that point, number three, Benchmade Contigo. This is not my favorite knife. But as massive as this blade is, it opens with such authority. I do not typically enjoy carrying thumb stud knives. The Contigo is the exception to that. With the Benchmade access lock and the thumb stud being placed in just the right place, and also this knife being just so darn heavy, The action is simply incredible. Absolutely, ab absolute ups to this Benchmade Contigo. Number two, probably not a surprise, I am the most boring man in the world, and thus the most boring knife guy. One of my top three was a Benchmade, the other top three is gonna be a Spyderco. In this case specifically, it is the PM2 Tonto. The reason that this makes it over the original version, which looks like this and is also quite fun, is just because the Tonto specifically has a little bit of a heavier blade and thus, uh, it closes so much. Also, the compression lock is just my favorite lock. Just the slightest. So you can sit here, you can even use the compression lock to open it. Pull the compression lock and just give it a flick. This thing is wonderfully fidgetable. It is so much fun to play with. Spiderco Pillmary pair text below because I can't say it takes my number two. And finally, my number one is a knife that I actively dislike. I believe that the following knife is not good, is not well made, and they should take another shot at it to repay their sins. This is, of course, you should have seen it coming, the Kershaw Induction. There's no reason why you would have seen it coming, but unless you've actually handled this. This has a version of the Hawk Lock designed by Grant and Gavin Hawk, which means that this little piece of crap budget thingy has some of the most incredible innovation and ingenuity behind it. That little it feels so assisted, like it is actually difficult to miss a flip. I am tr almost trying to. And going back in, this is the most fidgetable thing in the world. In my review of this, I don't think I've specifically reviewed the other of the top three. I'll get on that. But in my review of this, I savaged this thing because I don't like it. I don't think it's good. I think it's bad and Kershaw should apologize, blah, blah, blah. However, the one, th the one, the one thing that they got right when making this knife was, let's do it left-handed, was the action. And they got that so stupid right. Kershaw induction is my personally most fidgetable knife even though this will never, ever make it into my pocket, as long as I live. It's so thick, it's, I talk about it in the review. But that's my most fidgetable knife, Kershaw Induction. You don't have to like it to have fun with it. Is that my motto for life? It's possibly, that's my new, possible, that's my new motto, motto for life. If you have a top three fidget knives, which if you have, three knives, then yes, you have a top three fidget knives. Let me know what they are below. If you also make videos of this kind of stuff, actually, even if you don't typically make videos of this kind of stuff, make a video, explain it, tell the world. I don't know, I don't care. Let me know what your top three are. And if you did make a video, like let me know, link it below. 
Uh, what are your top three most fungible knives? And walk me through why. Do you like all of them? Is its fidgetability a big reason of why you like that knife? Let me know. I'm genuinely curious. How much does fidget factor play into your appreciation of the tools that you carry? If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or suggestions, let me know down below. If you have any interest in any of the channels that I've discussed, I think only two of them, let me know down below. Actually, just go look on that page. And other than that, have a great day. Bye.